Our third lightning speaker is the front-end architect at eVision, one of our sponsors um, in The Hague, and he will be talking to you about generating client validation rules. His name is Ronald van der Kooi. Hi, my name is uh, Ronald van der Kooi. I'm a uh, full-stack developer who loves React.js, right? Um, you can find me on Twitter um, and on GitHub. I, uh, I just uh, tweeted this. I, it's, it's great, the stuff that you learned today, right? You can now invoke functions with a backtick. Never heard of it. This is about generating your client validation rules. Okay, I work for a company called eVision Industry Software. Um, we build health and safety software for the uh, oil and gas industry. Uh, pretty, pretty neat. Um, we're a pretty young company, eight years now, uh, 200 plus employees. Uh, we have a great office in, in the city center of The Hague. And we have over 30 plus nationalities working for us. And about two years ago, we were facing some uh, performance related challenges. We were building a typical enterprise forms based application, kind of outdated stack. We were seeing uh, high, uh, high CPU spikes on our application servers. Um, then that's basically the nature of forms based applications, right? Very stateful, session based. So we had to do something about it. We completely rewrote our, uh, our front-end stack, and we chose React at that time, uh, mostly because of the uh, simple component model. It was very fast out of the box. Testability was great. And I think what's very important is that new devs can really, uh, really, really easily adopt to the, uh, to the React stack. The uh, results were great, as you can see. But then we had to handle the validations. Imagine this, we have a, a product which is very, very configurable per customer, per vertical, even per region. And this is all uh, configuration based. We have a huge configuration file which contains all the rules and validations. On top of that, we wrote our own domain specific uh, rule engine. And this was only available on the back end. So we, now we needed that on the client. So how would you do that? So we came up with the following options. For example, you can ask the server all the time for validations, right? You're working with a document and you say, am I valid, am I valid? Not really good, it becomes a bit chatty and we will be seeing 503 errors very soon. We could say, well, you know what? We're gonna write our rule engine again, but now on the client. Nah, we would have two rule engines now. We can manually write them per customer that would be hard to maintain, so we would be firefighting this all the time. You can also do nothing, right? You, uh, you can say, we're working with a document and I send it to the server when I'm done and the server tells me if it's right, if I can continue. That's very old fashioned. So we chose something in between. We said, you know what? We're gonna generate this. So how does this look like? As input, we take the rule, rules file, that, that big, big, big uh, XML file. We wrote a C sharp to JS generator, which generates a JavaScript file for you and serve that as static content to the browser. So your React app has access to it now. This looks something like this. It's a very simple, plain JavaScript file with simple comparisons in there. Uh, if statements as if everyone can understand, string, string, boolean, number comparisons. So that worked out very well. These had several benefits for us. It obviously reduces the load a lot. We don't need to ask to serve anymore. You have it there on the client. Fast feedback, JavaScript these days is very fast, so we can continuously execute this code on the, on the, uh, or in the, in the browser. It's very simple to debug. Uh, you can put your, put your breakpoint anywhere. You can hook up your login framework in there. And we still have our validation fallback because yeah, you might not be able to generate everything, uh, but there's always the server for you uh, as, a, as, as a last, uh, last defense, right? And we could regenerate it. When the convict changes per customer, we just regenerate the file and you will get the new validations. This looks something like this. So you're on the client. We have basic validations here, built-in validation for our product. 
imagine the type or title is always it's always it's always mandatory to, to fill that in. On top of that, we have the generated validations. Um, when you're done with that, you send it to the server. Basic message validations are string strings and ints ints, right? And then the built-in validations on the server kick in, and on top of that is the actual rule engine. That results in uh, a consistent way of showing the validations to the client. Uh, he can't tell where it's coming from. So yeah, that works very well. A little bit of a disclaimer here. I'm not trying to say how you should do this. This worked very well for us. I just want to say, keep, keep, keep it in mind to generate your code. Uh, it is always an option. With that said, that is the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs>